Hi everyone, welcome to video lecture number 23 or something. Um, please welcome Miss Julie. Hi. Um, she'll be hanging out with us today and doing her very first video lecture. So welcome. Yeah. So the things we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the components of blood and we're also going to talk about cardiovascular health. So starting with blood, what is blood? Um, whole blood, as you can see in this picture, is made up of multiple things. One of the things we have is red blood cells. Whoops, excuse me. Red blood cells. Um, we also have our white blood cells. And we also have something called plasma, right? And platelets, excuse me. Um, blood is made up of, excuse me, um, about 55% plasma, and the remaining 45% is made up of cells and platelets. As I said earlier, that the platelets and cells are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Okay, so the components of the plasma, which is 45%, is mainly water. Very simple. And the roles is that it's supposed to transport nutrients, waste hormones, enzymes, salts, and other things. Um, and the other thing that you need to know is that the plasma uh, has proteins that help aid in clotting blood and that it also helps for fighting infections. Okay. So red blood cells, we talked a lot about this already. Um, one of the things that you should know is that red blood cells are produced in bone marrow. Um, we already know that some of the characteristics of red blood cells is that it has the component hemoglobin, which is responsible for attaching to that oxygen um, in order to distribute the oxygen to the rest of the body. Right? Um, red blood cells... Are, have no nucleus or organelles. Um, their life cycle is relatively short, only about 120 days, and they are recycled in the liver and spleen. Um, on the surface of red blood cells is, um, you know, determines that blood type. I know we talked about um, the different, um, you know, surface proteins before, um, and so we won't really go over that. However, you should just remember that those proteins are there. And, of course, we know the role is to transport that oxygen. Okay, so one of the common diseases for red blood cells is called anemia. Um, anemia is basically when the, ox the red blood cells cannot transport the amount of oxygen that it is used to kind of carrying, which, and this can happen in two different ways. One of them is because of low red blood cell count, or it has a low amount of hemoglobin, usually because they lack iron, so you have iron deficiency. Um, and another way that, it's another type of anemia, which is called sickle cell anemia. This is with the red blood cells look different. They look like a little sickle, which is right here, or it looks, oh, oops, other way, pen. Or it looks like a little C. And when it looks like that, they don't have enough hemoglobin to basically transport the oxygen. Yeah, and so if you ever try to donate blood, um, one of the reasons why you will be deferred or you won't be allowed to donate blood is because of either you have low iron levels or you have anemia. So something to consider. All right, so moving on to platelets. Um, platelets, they're not actually whole cells. They're actually just cell fragments that are produced in the bone marrow. Um, but they do have a very important role. One of those roles is to, when you get a wound, for example, if you get a cut in your arm, it's those platelets that are gonna swarm to that wound and to release that clotting factor, which then it was going to allow your blood to clot and allow you, you know, prevent you from just continuously bleeding out. Um, one of uh, a common disease you may have heard about that re um, relates to platelets is something called hemophilia, right? Um, I know we talked about that during our genetics lecture is that idea that um, your blood is not clotting properly. It's that role of the platelets that is not functioning, and that is the problem because then you'll constantly constantly bleed and there's no way to clot your blood. So pretty dangerous in you know a lot of situations. And then white blood cells. And white blood cells are basically another type of cell and in the blood. And therefore, it's always producing the bone marrow, just like the red blood cells. But they go through a maturation process, which is different. For the B cells, they actually just stay in bone marrow. It's convenient. It's like B for B cells and B for bone marrow. But then the thymus, uh, in the T cells, they are produced, matured in the thymus. And then after they are all matured and they know which, um, like, antigens to 
fight off. They travel to the spleen and the lymph nodes, or they circulate in the blood, blood and lymph vessels, basically looking for pathogens or bacteria to attack. And the role is to attack foreign substances. Um, and that doesn't include just bad things like bacteria, but it also includes when you have when a person goes through transplants, they think that that is an enemy, and so they would attack that as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our cardiovascular health and disease section. Um, hopefully, I know we didn't have um, any notes about um, the components of blood on your skeleton notes. However, I still expect to see some type of questions or some type of notes when you come to class. So if you need to now, um, rewatch um, the first couple of minutes of this video lecture and really write me some notes. I, Mr. H, myself, and Ms. Julie will be checking for that. Okay, so we're going to start with the cardiovascular disease. Um, primarily, when you think of cardiovascular diseases, you think of heart attacks, strokes, and peripheral vascular disease, okay? And we're gonna talk about each of those moving on in this lecture. Um, one of the most important things to know is that cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death for both men and women in the United States. Um, and it's, it's also really unfortunate that it's, its occurrence, its incidence has been on the rise since World War II. Um, that while it's a mixture of both genetic factors um, that put people at greater risk, it's mostly a disease of lifestyle. So it's like your choice of what you eat, how much you exercise, and how you like conduct your life um, can lead to cardiovascular disease and unfortunately can lead to death. And then um, the main cause of cardiovascular disease is atherosclerosis, which Ms. Julie will explain to you. So we're going to talk about what atherosclerosis is. Um, atherosclerosis, even though it is kind of hard to pronounce, um, the definition of it is that it's a hardening and narrowing of the arteries due to the buildup of plaque. So the question is how the plaques form. So this is our little beautiful artery. Um, and you know that because it has really thick lining. Can I borrow that pen? Mm -hmm. Cool. So it has really thick lining, as you can see, and that's what makes it an artery. It has blood vessel, uh, blood cells. But as we learned just like five minutes ago, the blood also carries, the artery also has other things, and one of this is called cholesterol. Um, in particular, we're gonna focus on LDL because that's what makes the plaques form, and that's the bad cholesterol. So that's the yellow stuff. Okay, and then so there is a break in, the artery gets damaged, um, either by high blood pressure, smoking, a high cholesterol, or, what's the last one? Do you remember the last one? Diabetes. Okay diabetes. And so because of that, they, um, these people are, the arteries are more damaged and the cholesterol is able to enter into the linings of the arteries. Then the macrophage, which is our, a type of a white blood cell, tries to remove these cholesterols, but they cannot digest it. So they turn into what we call foam cells. They just stay there basically. But these foam cells, if they were just by themselves, it would be nice. But they call SOS by producing inflammatory molecules, and then they recruit more macrophages. <laughs> and then it's like a big disaster. So then this buildup that they eventually have is considered, is called plaque. And it's this buildup of plaque that, you know, restricts the size of your artery. And that, that restriction size limits blood flow. And that's what's going to cause heart attack or stroke, which is what we're going to talk about. So take a moment, pause the video if you need to, answer this question in the checkpoint. Why does atherosclerosis happen in arteries and not in veins? Okay, so like I said, what happens when the plaque builds up in arteries? If it's gone, if you allow it to go too far and whether you don't have any um, either surgical intervention or any lifestyle changes, it can eventually just block your arteries entirely, right? And as you can see, what happens is that your red blood cells, you it's going to restrict that blood flow and it's going to start to back up. Um, you know, and one of the things is that it's going to, as you can see in this picture down here, um, it's going to build up that blood flow, right? And you can see that there's that restriction down here, right? You're not, that blood is not going to be able to flow as effectively through. Um, it can cause your arteries to rupture, which cause a blood clot, um, and depending 
on where the plaque grows and blocks blood flow, it can cause heart attack, strokes, or peripheral vascular disease. So for the the rupturing, it's the plaques. The, the, the plaques basically, the pieces of it falls off and then it gets stuck in like small capillaries. And then that's where the blood clot happens. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So like I said, depending on where your where it happens in the heart, it may cause a heart heart attack. So idea right here is you have something called your coronary artery. Is that if there is a block and blood doesn't get to the rest of your muscle your heart muscle tissues, that's what causes a heart attack. It's because you're you're restricting that oxygen from reaching other parts of your heart. Okay, so what causes, so there's a lot of different causes for atherosclerosis, and it could go from types of, and as we said, it's a it's a very much a lifestyle kind of a disease, so some of the things would be like, oh, oops, I keep, sorry, smoking your laptop, diet, um, it could, like, ha a high cholesterol level, oh, here we go, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure, because that will cause the damages in the arteries, as well as obesity, smoking, stress, exercise. And that's why you know that atherosclerosis is preventable. But unlike diabetes, it's not reversible because you're kind of stuck with, if they get clogged, the kind of buildups on the plaques, you kind of just have them forever. Okay, so like I said, what is a heart attack? Um, its scientific term is called myocardial infarction, right? It's, like I said, it's one of those coronary arteries that are blocked. Um, and it restricts that blood flow to the, the actual mushy tissues of the heart. Um, and unfortunately, then those cells can die or become damaged, right? Then it's going gonna, it's gonna to restrict the heart from being able to pump blood properly and effectively. Um, and it's, you know, obviously going to cause a lot of problems. And like we said, it's that buildup of plaque. It's that atherosclerosis that's going to cause heart attacks. Um, um, there is a cool little heart attack video if you want to see it. Um, we'll post this. Um, video on the school loop, so then you can see it. Okay, so sudden cardi, so um the um, the there is the largest cause of natural death in the United States. More half of it is heart disease deaths, which is why this lecture is so important, not just for learning bio and getting an A, but also just for your life because life is more important than getting your grades. <laughs> okay. And um, so this is usually caused by an electrical malfunction because the heart is controlled by um, like an electrical signal. And so if that electrical thing doesn't, they are not communicating with each other, there's an abnormal heart rhythm. Um, and okay, and then the heart is unable to pump blood and the death will occur within minutes. So it's important that you get help right away if you notice somebody having a sudden cardiac death. Yeah, and that's why there's been a big push in the recent recent years to have AEDs or automatic electronic defibrillators um, in schools and public places all across the country because that's what can help an individual with cardiac arrest, right? Um, you put those pads on, the machine does all the work, it registers um, your heart rhythm, everything like that, and it's that emergency treatment along with CPR and fibrillation, which is what the AD prov provides, um, can really give someone enough time to actually survive. You, if you give them CPR, provide them AD, allow the AD to do, to do its work, and enough time for paramedics to get there can save someone's life. All right, so compare and contrast. Take a moment, um, compare and contrast heart attack and sudden cardiac death. What are the differences? What are the similarities? So pause the video if you need to. Reverse, go back, um, write down some more notes. We're going to be checking this. Okay, so the next part is what is a stroke? So as we said, the blood clots can cause different things like heart attacks, and then the other one is a stroke. And this is when basically the clot goes to your brain and it interrupts that blood supply. More importantly, basically, it interrupts the oxygen that the brain cells need. Um, and what, there's two different types. One of them is the, is, I don't know how to pronounce Ischemic? It. Okay, ischemic stroke. And ischemic stroke is the one with the blood clot. So um, because the you get clog a blood clot in the cerebral cerebral means brain cerebral artery, um, your the there is no oxygen supply towards certain parts of the brain. And after like a couple of minutes, I think it was like what seven minutes, then those parts become irreversibly damaged. 
and this is the 80% of all strokes, so this is the most major part type of a stroke, and it's caused by atherosclerosis. Okay, so the other type of stroke is a hemorrhagic stroke. Um, this is when an artery in the brain either leaks or ruptures. Um, it corresponds to about the remaining 20% of strokes that we see in hospitals and other individuals, um, generally caused by uncontrolled hypertension or a cerebral aneurysm. Um, hypertension is just a fancy term for high blood pressure, and a cerebral aneurysm is that is that um, weakness in a wall of artery, either cerebral or aortic, and causes that rupture. Right? Um, it can be just somewhat of a genetic weakness in arteries. Of course, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, smoking, and other um, you know illegal drug uses can all can all cause a stroke. Okay, so the checkpoint, another one. So a TPA is a clot-busting drug that can be that can dissolve blood clots if given within a few hours of a stroke. So should TPA be given to people who have an ischemic stroke, ischemic stroke, or a hemorrhagic stroke? And what would happen if TPA were given for the wrong type of stroke? Okay, so treatment for heart attacks and strokes, like I said, CPR, AED, if you do come across someone who's having a heart attack or a stroke, um, medication, um, like Ms. Julie said, TPA is a type of medicine, or um, also called as like a clot buster. It's essentially, if you think of it as like a little missile that you can administer, and it goes straight to where that clot is, and will break it up. There's something called statins, um, which have been increasingly popular. Um, they've been they help to lower cholesterol and prevent second heart attacks. Um, you can also have um, different types of surgery, like bypass surgery, um, angioplasty or stent insertion. Um, there's possible ways to actually clean out an artery to remove that plaque, as well as repairing aneurysms. Um, but of course, like we said, none of these treatments fixes the underlying problem of atherosclerosis. Okay, so heart bypass surgery. So basically the word bypass means like going a different route than the original path. And so what they're doing is you're going to find the artery that has a cl clogged with plaque and you're going to go right below that part of the plaque, and then you're going to reroute that blood. And in here, they give you a common one that happens with coronary arteries, and it's the internal mammary artery bypass. So that this bypass, so there would be a clog right here, and then they would be bypassing it. Um, and you would do this by getting another artery from your own body and then just placing it there through surgery. Okay, so what an angioplasty and stent insertion is, imagine you have those fatty deposits on your walls, right? It's all right here and right here, right? Really restricting that blood flow. What you can do is that doctors can insert this, like, balloon-type thing, this white thing right here, that has a metal, like, mesh around it. You can insert that catheter into, um, you know, into your arteries and expand the balloon. And then when it expands, it leaves that stent, that metal mesh, open. And then you remove the balloon, and that that stent stays in place, and it kind of re it adds that rigidity to your arteries, and you know prevents that artery from closing up too much. So there's a video um, that you could you could look at to see more in depth about this. Okay, so carotid endorectomy. Whoa. Okay, so. It's a surgery to remove the plaque from the carotid artery. So what you're going to do is basically you're just the artery that has a plaque, they identify it probably with some instruments, and then you use take your scissors or scissor-like tools and cut the artery and then just take out the, pla the plaque entirely. And then that may prevent a stroke or a heart attack, depending on where it is, from occurring in the future. All right, so here's a checkpoint. Um, go ahead and match each of these procedures with their intended result. So take a pause if you need to. Okay, so now we're going to say kind of the opposite. It's like, how do you, cardiovascular health, like how can it be managed? And it's basically the opposite of doing the stuff that don't cause atherosclerosis, like eating healthy, exercising, not being stressed out, even though you have a biopractical soon, <laughs> a pick practical soon, no smoking and alcohol, not taking out any alcohol. Okay, yeah. of course, controlling blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, etc. So, um, and just be aware of your genetic risks, right? Cardiovascular is a cumulative lifelong process and you can actually slow or prevent it. So thank you for watching. Um, you know, come to class with any questions and we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks. How long is